Hey everyone, welcome to the Power and Conflict poem summaries. Um, if you haven't already, have a look at the Power and Conflict themes and the video for looking at poetic forms and devices. I'll put the links in the description box for you to check out after you've seen this video. Remember, this is just a summary of the poems, so you need to make sure you read them and that you're familiar with each and every one of them. So let's get started. So this video will briefly look at certain aspects of the poems. So we're going to look at the context, a summary, the forms and the structures. So Ozymandias by Percy Shelley. So the poem was written in 1817 after he heard about an Italian explorer and had found a statue in the desert. Summary of the poem is the narrator meets a traveller who tells him about a statue found in the middle of the desert. It is a statue of a king who ruled over a past civilization. If you don't know already, have a brief look on the internet for Ramesses II, who we assume this poem is about. So the form is, in the, is a sonnet with a volta or a turning point at line nine, similar to a Petrarchan sonnet. It uses iambic pentameter, but does not follow a regular rhyme scheme. The structure builds up the image of the statue and the vastness of the desert, highlights the insignificance of the statue in comparison. London by William Blake. So the poem was written in 1794. Blake had radical views about society and politics, radical for that time. He believed in equality and questioned church teachings. Summary is the narrator describes a walk around London and talks about the people he sees who are miserable. The people with money and who are in power are the cause of all the pain. It's in the form of a dramatic monologue with a first person narrative and it has an ABAB rhyme scheme and regular rhythm. The first two stanzas focus on people he sees before the focus changes to those he holds responsible. The Prelude by William Wordsworth. Uh, this is just an extract from the Prelude. The Prelude is a very extended poem. It's an autobiographical poem and it explores key moments in the poet's life and it was published in 1850. Summary, so it begins on a summer evening when the narrator finds a boat and then takes it out onto the lake. It's in a first person narrative and uses blank verse which is unrhymed verse in iambic pentameter. The structure is that there's three main sections in the extract. The first section is light and carefree. Second is darker and fearful. And the final section is rather reflective. My Last Duchess by Robert Browning. So the poet was fascinated by Italian Renaissance and the poem was published in 1842. Um, it was based on a real duke, so if you do have a chance, do look that up. But otherwise, the, the duke was proudly displaying the portrait of his late duchess and comments about how she was flirtatious and ungrateful towards him and him, his name and himself. The form is a dramatic monologue written in iambic pentameter. And the structure is the poem builds towards a confession about what happened to the Duchess. The Charge of the Light Brigade by Alfred Tennyson. Tennyson was the poet laureate from 1850 and wrote the poem in 1854 in honour of the soldiers who died in the battle. So it describes a battle between British cavalry and Russian forces during the Crimean War. A misunderstanding meant that the soldiers were ordered to advance into a valley surrounded by enemy soldiers. The form is third person narrative with rhyming couplets and triplets and a relentless rhythm. The structure tells the story in chronological order from start to finish. Exposure by Wilfred Owen. So he wrote the poem while serving in the trenches of World War One. Um, sometime between 1917 and 1918. 
Most of his poems show his anger at the waste of life in the war. Soldiers in the trenches are awake in the night and are afraid of an enemy attack. However, the biggest enemy is the cold. The form is present tense using the first person plural. Each stanza has a regular rhyme scheme and ends with a half line. Poem has eight stanzas, but there is no progression. The last stanza ends with the same words as the first one, reflecting the monotony of life in the trenches. Storm on the Island by Seamus Heaney. So it was an Irish poet who, wrote, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1995, often wrote about themes like childhood, nature and homeland. So the narrator talks about how community thinks it is prepared for a coming storm. As the poem goes on, their confidence starts to disappear as the storm develops. The form is blank verse, which mirrors everyday speech, first person plural to show collective experience and only one stanza. The structure shifts from feeling secure to fearful. There is a volta at line 14. Bayonet charge by Ted Hughes. Context, so the poet's father served in World War I and the poet was a mechanic in the RAF before going to university. The, um, it focuses on a single soldier's experience of a charge towards enemy lines. Overriding emotion is fear, which replaces patriotism. The form uses enjumbament and caesura and has lines of uneven length. The poem starts in media reis, in the middle of the action, and covers the soldier's thoughts and actions. Remains by Simon Armitage. So from a collection of poems that looked at the effects of war on ex-soldiers, this one is based on the accounts of a British soldier who served in Iraq. A group of soldiers shoot a man who's running away from a bank raid. His death is graphically described. The narrator isn't sure whether the man was armed or not and it haunts him. Form has no regular line length or rhyme scheme making it sound like a story, starts as first person plural, but then changes to singular and becomes more personal. The structure is anecdotal format and the clear volta at the beginning of the fifth stanza. Poppies by Jane Ware was one of a collection of poems that were commissioned in 2009 by Caroline Duffy. So a mother describes her son leaving home to join the army. Poem is about the mother's reaction to him leaving. First person narrative, no regular rhyme or rhythm. Long sentences and enjumbament imitate the mother's thoughts and Cesare to show how she tries to hold her emotions in. Chronological in describing his preparations, his de departure, and then what the mother does afterwards. War Photographer by Caroline Duffy. She became the first woman to be Poet Laureate in 2009 and this poem was published in 1985. So a war photographer is in his dark room developing pictures taken in war zones across the world, contrasting with the calm and safety of England. Four stanzas of equal length and a regular rhyme scheme the form and for the structure follows the actions and thoughts of the photographer in his darkroom distinct change at the end at the start of the third stanza when he remembers a specific death tissue by Imtiaz Dhaka so the poet was born in Pakistan and raised in Glasgow tissue is from her 2006 collection first three stanzas talk about the importance of paper as a means of recording history. Stanzas four to six focuses on the fragility of paper. The last four stanzas look at creating things, particularly human life. So for the form, it's a poetic voice is elusive with the focus on humanity in general. There's no regular rhyme or rhythm, but nine stanzas of four lines each with a single line at the end. 
structure the three main parts to the poem moving through the ideas about history, human experience and the creation of human life. The Emigre by Carol Rumens. It's an English poet and lecturer with over 15 collections of poems and this poem was published in 1993. The speaker talks about a city in a country she left as a child. The city seems to be under attack. For the form, it's first person narrative with three eight line stanzas, but no regular rhythm or rhyme scheme. The speaker's memory of the city grows as the poem moves. Each stanza ends with sunlight to show the speaker sees the city in a positive light. Kamikaze by Beatrice Garland. So the poem was published in 2013. The poet works as a clinician and researcher for the NHS. Opens with a kamikaze pilot setting off on his mission. They were specially trained Japanese pilots who were used in World War II and, few, and flew suicide missions where they crashed their planes into targets. In the poem, the pilot turned around and didn't complete his mission and was shunned by everyone. So the form is a third person narrative using reported speech of the pilot's daughter. And the structure follows the first five stanzas form one sentence. The final two stanzas deal with the consequences of the pilot's actions. Checking Out Me History by John Agard. So the poet was born in Guyana, a Caribbean country in South America, but moved to Britain in 1977. His poetry often examines cultures and identities. The narrator is talking about his identity and how it links to his knowledge of history. He was taught British history, but wasn't taught about his Caribbean roots and lists, his, lists famous figures from history and questions why he doesn't know about people from other cultures. The form is a mixture of stanza forms, suggesting he's breaking language rules he's been taught. Poem alternates between historical and fictional characters from Caribbean and British culture. So what you should do next. Firstly, make sure you read the poems and are familiar with all of them. Familiarise yourself with the themes that they cover. Make a list of useful quotes for the poems so you can use them in your exam and revise poet forms and poetic devices. So was this useful? Share, like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.